This next pattern is one that's called a transparent, and it's given that name for a reason. Uh, years ago, Vince Marinero uh, pointed out that most ants are translucent. You can see through the bodies. If you hold them up to the light, you can actually see that these ants are transparent. So the idea in this was to create an ant that was transparent, that had a glow to it, that you could actually see through the body, more or less. And this is a sinking pattern. If you hackle it heavily, it will float. If you dress that hackle, it'll float. But this was primarily designed as a sinking pattern uh, to be fished like the old lacquered ant. It's tied on a size 16 Tinko 101 hook. You can tie them smaller if you want to, but I found that the size 16 is the best all around to do this fly with. It's important that they use the, si the uh, 101 instead of the standard down eye dry fly hook. If you notice, this hook is what they call a ring eye, that is the eye is straight out instead of turned down. It's much easier to work with epoxy on this size fly if you use this particular hook. This is a really simple pattern to do. If you want this to look just spectacular, I found that using silk thread instead of standard tying thread is the way to go. The rationale behind that is, of course, if you look at a cane rod where the rod has been varnished, the wraps turn translucent, and that is silk thread that's used on a cane rod. The same thing will happen with epoxy. So using silk thread with the epoxy, you're going to get some spectacular effects with this particular fly. It's so simple to do. All you do is a thread wrap for the rear and a thread wrap for the front. I'm going to use the red silk thread on the rear, and I'm going to use black silk or just plain black thread on the front. It doesn't matter whether that's silk or not because it's going to be pretty much opaque. The trick here is to make the rear of the fly a little bigger than the front, but you don't want to tie a great big ant body. You want to tie this only about two-thirds the size of the finished body. The epoxy is going to fill in the rest of it. And I'm going to taper this little rear body backward and forward and then build up the metal with this silk thread. I use Pearsall silk and that can be obtained from most fly shops that cater to people that tie salmon flies and oh soft tackle flies and that sort of thing. It's very popular with those people. It's, it's not cheap, but on the other hand, how many ants can you tie with a little roll of silk thread? You can tie quite a few. That body is just about the right size. I'm going to stop at that point right there. Notice that's only about two-thirds of the size of the body of an ant. And I'm going to whip finish that thread and cut it and get it off the shank of the hook. So we've got the rear of the fly finished. And as I say, for the front, I'm just going to use standard 6 alt black tying thread. Same procedure. Just attach the thread to the shank of the hook, wrap it back a little bit, trim your thread, get it out of the way. Then I'm going to build up a little head section. You just do your thread wraps, and just sort of build up that head to about two-thirds of the size of the finished head of the fly. Again, once you get that finished, just finish the thread cut it off the hook. I'm going to point a couple of things out to you here. First of all, you do not want, if you tie this in a single color, like red or black or yellow or orange or what have you, do not make a continuous thread wrap. The middle of the hook shank has got to be left bare. If you continue that thread wrap, from this point all the way to the head, the epoxy is going to flow right up that thread wrap and you won't be able to do this fly correctly. So we're set now to do the epoxy procedure. This is pretty easy to do. Um, it can get messy, but if, if you get epoxy on your fingers or on one of your tying tools or something like that, just plain rubbing alcohol is a great solvent. It'll take it right off. So keep that in mind for the future. This is just plain old DEVCON 5-minute epoxy. You can get it at fly fishing shops. You can get it at the hardware store. It doesn't matter. I like the two syringes together. It makes it very easy to work with. 
All you have to do is put a little pressure on these syringes and that epoxy is just going to come right out. I use a little pad of uh, this note paper. You don't want to overdo this and sometimes one tube will give you a little more than is necessary and I try to even that out when I'm working with it. Two little drops of epoxy. You just don't need much at all. Remember it's not going to take a great deal to do one of these ants. And I'll just take a needle, this is just a sewing needle and a little pin vise. Mix that epoxy up. I'll just try to even this out. I got a little more of one than the other, but it's not no problem. It'll work out fine. Mix that up, and it's critical that you use a rotary vise to do this fly. It can be done in other vices that, that turn, but the rotary vise really is a critical part of this fly because the fly is going to rotate in exactly the same plane. It makes it much easier to put this epoxy on. Okay, we've got that mixed up pretty well. I'm just going to get a little bit on the end of this needle. And then I'm just going to start turning this fly. It's easier if you start underneath putting that epoxy on. Just rotate that vise. Let the epoxy run right off the needle onto that thread wrap. You can see it's just going to do exactly what I want it to do there. You can control it. It's no problem. There we've got the rear of the fly done. Now it's critical that you continue to rotate this. If you don't, that epoxy is going to sag. So as you reach down to pick up more epoxy to do the head, just continue turning that vise. Pick up a little bit of epoxy, not quite as much as you did for the rear, and we'll just layer the head now. Just a little bit of epoxy up there. Keep it out of the eye of the hook. If it flows in there, you've got to start all over again. You can wipe it off and do it all over again. Don't throw the whole thing away. And there we go. And you see how easy that was? Of course, I've only done about 400 of these things, so it's not, not, uh, not quite as easy as it looks, but you'll get the hang of it. Now the problem here is you've got to sit and rotate this vise for about three or four minutes until that epoxy hardens up. And I've made it easy. I've got my rod finishing motor hooked up to this vise at home so that it rotates at about 5 RPM, which is just right for doing this. And I'll just click that motor on, it'll sit here and turn, and I can get up, take a break, or do whatever I want to do. So you turn this fly for about three or four minutes, that epoxy will harden up, and then you're ready for the next step. Now I'm just going to move this fly out of the vise, get it out of the way, because I've already got a body done here. In essence, what I'm going to do is just throw this thing away. This is one that I did a little bit earlier. The epoxy has hardened up on it, and you can see what that looks like now. Notice I've got a lot of the hook shank bare between the abdomen and the head. The next step is real simple. All you do is just reattach your thread, cover the hook shank with thread, cut your thread, bring the hook up to the middle, and tie in some black hackle. Then a couple of turns of black hackle. And we tie that off. Again, come in, trim that hackle tight to the body of the fly, and whip finish it. And there's a the little finish transparent. Uh, people ask me, say, well, boy, that's a lot of trouble. You know, you got to put that epoxy on there. It takes five minutes to cure. and you know, what's the point? You know, it takes so long. Actually, it doesn't. If you stop and think how long it takes the average person to tie something like a humpy or a royal wolf, you can do these faster than that. I also will do the thread bodies first. I will tie a dozen or two dozen thread bodies, lay them out on the table, 
and then do all the epoxy at one time. I'll do the epoxy in this vise when it gets hard enough for me to move to a, another vise or to this little item here. This is what I use. It's a little magnetic uh, holder. You can pick that fly up once you've finished it. I've got a pair of forceps here. The tips are bent so they fit through the eye of the hook. Let's assume this one is wet here and I wanted to move it over. Of course, this one is hard as a rock, but you pick it up, you move it over, and just lay it on the side of this little magnetic plate. It will harden up very nicely, and you can just layer these things on as you go, and when they get hard, you can go back and hackle them. Now, I know it says five-minute epoxy on these tubes, but what you really should do is to let these harden at least an hour or two hours before you hackle them. That way you'll avoid any sort of problem with fingerprints on the epoxy. It will remain hard, shiny, beautiful. The end result, again, is a fly that has this beautiful translucent effect to it. That silk thread is cleared out nicely. You can see how translucent that looks and fish go wacko over this sometimes. I'll fish it by itself, but one of my favorite ways to fish this is a dropper about 10 or 12 inches behind a big terrestrial pattern like a hopper or a cricket. Fish comes up to look at the hopper or cricket, sees the ant, takes it. It's as simple as that. I fish this a lot. It's a proven fish getter, and it's one of my favorites.